for the opening song. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the <laughs> Pastor has some messages as well. 
Um, I have a couple of messages. Um, the first one I want to mention is, since our theme today is more music, I want us to pay homage to our wonderful, wonderful uh, music director, who is also our, our liturgist, our pianist, and our PowerPoint master. Thank you very much. The other thing I want to about two things. Uh, we have Pride Month coming up, so if you're interested in helping out with Pride Booth, um, please talk to me about that. And also, Marcia Voitzino, who is one of our wonderful members, who if you've ever received a pair card from this congregation, Marcia is the one who sends those out. Well, Marcia is laid up. She had a successful surgery, and she will be laid up for about four weeks and can't do anything. So if there are folks who are willing to um, take a dish to Marsha, um, why don't you come see me, and we'll make sure that we at least um, vary, you know, time, uh, space them out a little bit. I know she was cooking like crazy before she had the surgery, but it'd be nice to, for her, fam her faith community to remember her with some meals also. Thank you. We do also have uh, we do also have um, cards in the office, so if you're wanting to send her a card, you can come and dig through those later on. And I think that's it for announcements, right? Yeah. And at this time, now honoring people. <laughs> this is the first Sunday of the month, and every first Sunday um, is Recognition and Appreciation Sunday. So if you have a birthday, anniversary, or other special day that you're celebrating during the month of May. Please come forward for a special blessing. Yeah. I am, but I run in this. They're closer to I knew we had one. Yeah. I like that to get all the attention. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jen, you want to go ahead and start us off? Yeah, I've got a really special person in my life who has a birthday this month. It's my mom, Jean. Jean does not like to be up here with a microphone in her face like her daughter does. So I am going to say that we are so blessed to still have our mother. She will be 94 years old. Oh. Oh. years ago I had a really fun 30th birthday, so on the 15th I'm going to repeat it again. <laughs> <laughs> on May 1st, Jerry and I celebrate 30 years together. Wow. May 3rd, I turned 81. Wow. <laughs> uh, May 13th, I've been going into my 84th year. On <laughs> May 25th, I'll be 57. <laughs> Join me in extending your hand in a sign of blessing. Holy One, thank you for all these wonderful, wonderful journeys. Thank you for the places they've taken them and that they have, that you have taken them here. We thank you, God, that we get to share our journeys with them and we pray for joy for their lives as you continue to protect and be with them. In your many names we pray. Amen. Amen.
Please come forward at this time. Thanks. 
whose right hand and holy arm have brought God victory. The Lord has made known their victory. God has revealed God's vindication in the sight of the nations. God has remembered God's steadfast love and faithfulness to God's people. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, make a joyful noise before our sovereign, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who live in it. Let the floods clap their hands, let the hills sing together for joy at the presence of the Lord. For God will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. Please rise, whether in body or spirit, and hear this good news reading, John chapter 15, verses 9 to 17. As my mother, father, God, has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Creator's commandments and abide in God's love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you. I say these things so that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends. If you do this love, I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servants does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have known to you everything that I have heard from my mother, father, God. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last so that God will give you whatever you ask for in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. You may be seated.
Music is ever present in our lives. It is everywhere. Every commercial, every TV show, every movie, in the stores, in the elevators, and of course, in worship. But that's not the only place that there's music. Because there is also music in the dance of a bee, and in the wind in the tree, and in the movement of the ocean, and the beat of a thunderstorm. And while it is ever present, we don't always pick up on it. And that's the relationship between our celebration of music in Psalm 98 and in Jesus' words in John about love. Frederick Buckner has observed regarding Jesus' command for us to love one another, love is not primarily an emotion, but an act of will. Yeah. I love that. So we are able to will ourselves to be present to the music, and we are able to will ourselves to extraordinary love. Another way to look at it is to call it choice. We don't have the ability to choose what happens to us, but we do have the ability to choose how we react to it. Or as Abe Lincoln famously said, most people were about as happy as they make up their minds to be. Amen. And all of this is to explain that when I say more music, what I'm really saying is pay more attention to the music in your life that's already there. Avram Goldstein of Stanford University has studied what gives people thrills. In examining the self-reports of more than 500 people, Avram found that at the bottom of the list was a parade, believe it or not. I love parades. 96% of respondents indicated receiving a thrill from a musical passage. That ranked number one, music for giving thrills. In fact, musical passage even beat out sex by over 20 percentage points. <laughs> music in this country is big business too. We are never far from it. Most of the time it's a push of the button or these days a voice command away. We listen to it, react to it, revel in it, sing it, and some people write it. Clearly music has a very special place in the life of the church. Its importance to the church is manifested in all sorts of ways. And the choice of music sometimes causes spirited debate and even outright conflict within church families. MCC Pastor Reverend Dexter Breck wrote recently, I'm leery of commandments. The older I grow, the more I believe there are few absolute rules in life. I do, however, believe in the law of love. That statute that insists that the ways we can experience complete joy in this life are rooted in abiding love. Living into and living <coughs> That kind of love is what connected Jesus with the divine and connects us with the divine that we are called to live in our journeys. Faithfulness to this commandment is what I believe can bring joy to ourselves, those that we live among, and the world. And more than simply being a powerful medium, music demonstrates that loving intent. Music can beam its sounds on many human problems and can open the heart to many joys. Anne Rosenfield has called music the beautiful disturber and comments, music can move us to tears or to dance, to fight or to make love. It can inspire our most exalted religious feelings and ease our anxious and lonely moments. Its pleasures are many, but it can also be alien, irksome, most maddening. Ever had a musical earworm that just played over and over and over in your head? Some music summons us to action, like Rise Up, O People of God, or Singing for Our Lives. At MCCQC, this little light of mine is a song that both unites us and signifies our defiance to the world in the face of many obstacles. Amen. And so music can also be a form of protest. 
The folk songs of Woody Guthrie and those of the 60s and 70s were that. I remember one tin soldier and war and what's going on. And even Helen Reddy's I Am Woman. Often music soothes and restores. First Samuel talks about an evil spirit that regularly afflicted King Saul, an agitation of one kind or another, and the music created by David, the future king, the music created by David on the lyre made Saul feel refreshed and well again. Inspiration is another function of music. It can restore our vision and lift us to a greater level of appreciation and motivation. Best of all, music is a channel for the grace of God. God's presence is always a mediated one, like the burning bush, for example. Music is yet another vessel of God's service in God's disclosure to God's people. Robert McCarthy Brown said this about the close association between theology and music. No theological statement of divine ineffability can begin to compare with the wonder of mystery communicated by Beethoven's last string quartets, Handel's Messiah, and St. Francis's Canticle of the Sun. In our hymns, music becomes the vehicle through which hope and affirmation come to life through the lyrics, through the words, and the, and the person's hearing and singing them. The music of Jesus Christ Superstar and God's Bill can still rock my soul. But also, the music of birds singing, or dolphins playing, or whale songs. If you've never taken the time to listen to whale songs, please do so. They're available, just look it up on, online. Now, how exactly do the love of music, the, do the love and music work? <coughs> In a congregation as diverse as ours, <laughs> we have people from Catholic and Pentecostal, from no religious background, Baptist, Buddhist, spiritualists, humanists, Lutherans, etc., etc., etc. So how does that work? Well, we work together. <laughs> we compromise. We seek to place the importance of love and community over our own personal preferences. Our music is but one excellent example of that. So just remember, when we sing a song that you absolutely despise, <laughs> remember that for somebody else, that was the highlight of their service. How does it all work? God's grace and miracles is all I can say. Well, the bless my soul, what's wrong with me? I'm itching like a man on a fuzzy tree. My friends say I'm acting wild as a bug. I'm in love. I'm all shook up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just think about it. Jesus. When you think about Elvis, I'm in love. I'm all shook up. More music.
souls sometimes. And so allow God to shake you up a little bit this morning to remove all those cobwebs, anything that keeps you from connecting with the divine, with creation, or your brothers and sisters. Let us pray. Magnificent master of the symphony. We give you thanks and praise. Lord, thank you for putting up with our sour notes. Thank you, God, for reminding us of the sacred music that's always around us. Draw us now in the Spirit's tether, as together we pray in the manner Jesus taught his own disciples to pray. Our, our Creator. Creator. In heaven and all around us, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Now the good news. It makes us sing with joy. No matter where you've been on your journey, where you find yourself right now, or where you think you might be headed, our God is a God of love and forgiveness who runs to meet you with open arms. In the name of our Creator, Redeemer, and Holy Spirit, you are forgiven. Thanks be to God. <sighs> Jesus' first miracle was at a party, a wedding party in Cana of Galilee. And Jesus was accused of, of being a drunkard because he hung around with people who enjoyed life. They once sang, they once talked about how, you know, you complained about things and then we piped, but you wouldn't dance. <laughs> Jesus makes it simple for us. The blessing, the brokenness, the healing. Remember me. Jesus lifted the cup with his friends on many occasions, gave thanks, blessed it, and offered it to his friends, saying, drink from this, all of you. This is my love poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink this, remember me. So, Holy One, we remember you with these simple elements of fruit of the field and fruit of the vine in the many ways in which we celebrate and understand them in our diversity or fail to understand them at all. May they be soul food for our <coughs> spiritual journeys. In the name of Jesus, the joy giver, we pray. Amen. If our ushers and helpers would come forward, this is an open table. You need not be a member of this church or any church to receive what God offers you here today.
is for all that we have received, whether here or in the sanctity of our homes, and ask your blessings upon it in the name of Jesus, the joy giver. Amen. Amen. Please rise, whether in body or spirit, as you are able for our closing hymn. Thank you. 